Vaughn, how about you? I'm doing just fine. Well, good, good. I clocked a little bit fast, so I'm on fast this morning. You, you, you just on, you ain't on fast, you just on. You just, you just want to be on, that's all. I, I, I am, I mean, my clock is fast. <laughs> I went out the other day and they ain't right and I ain't, I ain't changing, I ain't trying to shut my mic, put them back behind, so. Uh, all right, Mother Bob, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay.
Instead, trust and honor God and turn your back on evil. And the last verse said, then you will be given renewed health and energy. As we look at this lesson, you know, we get into trouble when we try to think, we, when we think we have all the answers. Where can you look for trustworthy God? The writer of Proverbs called us to humility. To us to humble ourselves, acknowledging God's authority in our lives instead of relying only on our own sins. You see, so many times you see people, they think they already got their life mapped out. They, they know what they want to do. They, they think they know how they're going to get there and all that. And, and they have not included God. They're not running by God to see what he said. And so when I, I hear a lot of things, that when I get a certain age, I get 30 or 40, I'm going to have my own house. I'm going to have this kind of car. I'm going to have this kind of job and all. Never knowing, never passing it by God to see what he says. God, you may plan to be a doctor, but God may plan for you to be a minister. So you just don't know. You always pass these things before God. And see, when we look at, when we go to the book of Proverbs, it tells us all Proverbs, the book of instruction, uh, it tells us all the things that we need to be doing to live a good life. And it provides guidance and wisdom for godly living. You know, Proverbs provides godly living, time to warning, and advice on how to walk in relationship with God and how to go in our relationship with man. And, and it says, uh, um, you know, the book of Proverbs teaches us how to have a good relationship in all areas of our lives with our friends, our family, our associates, and our co-workers. Through our relationship with God, we are empowered to live a life of high moral standards that are in line with God's standards. You see, everything Proverbs tells us that whatever you do, pass it through the Lord. Let it before God. Let Him take, guide you. Let Him lead you and tell you what to do. He can lead you around so many pitfalls. So many things that would have caused your problem. Had you taken it to God, God will lead you around it, lead you through it, or, or just get rid of the problem. Regardless of how he plans to do it, it, it's better to take it to him and let him do the job. It teaches us, Proverbs teaches us to be wise with our words. In Proverbs 18 and 21, it says, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And uh, he's saying that, <clears throat> watch the tongue now. He says sometimes the tongue has, it, has the power of life and death. And sometimes the way some of the people said they are God's people, and their, their tongues are toxic. They, they speak, have poison and all that. We need to, and Proverbs tell us, be careful how you talk, what you say, and how you say it. And it says, those who love to talk will suffer the consequences. Men have died for saying the wrong thing. And words, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or they're fruit. You choose. And when we are talking about things, we have to make sure that, you know, we have to watch sometimes, watch the way we, and we say things. And some of us say it with such toxic, such, um, with, with such harsh words. When we're talking about our fellow person, our, our you know, whatever, and God is, the other words say, uh uh, watch that. Don't, don't be talking that way. First of all, don't be talking about to somebody. And then second, watch how you talk. He teaches us how to, how to be wise in our speech and have self-control in our words. We have to watch our tongue. That is one of the biggest problems we have today. We have to watch the tongue. And then Proverbs goes on to say, you know, it provides for our work life too. As Christians, we're accountable to God. 
to give our best to our job and to use our skills to glorify God. If you got a job and you know you're going to be paid for eight hours or if you're not a salary person, you're going to be paid for eight hours. And if I mess around, the, the proverb is telling us, don't play around. Don't play around trying to waste the day to wait to get enough time. It says, dive in there. Do what you know you're supposed to do. Work hard because everything you do should glorify, even our job should glorify, should use our, we should use our skills on the job to glorify God. He says, Proverbs teach us how to be successful in life. Now, God's meaning of success is not the same as our meaning of success. God sees success as having high moral values, spiritual devotion, and obedience to Him, and having a good relationship with the among people. See, Solomon stressed, he emphasized the begin, at the beginning of this lesson, do not forget the teaching of the Lord. It is important to our physical and spiritual health. So he, uh, in Kings 3, the first Kings 3, 5 and 14, it says, when God told Solomon to ask for whatever he wanted, instead of, instead of asking for riches like many people would have, and I'm sure many kings would have, Solomon asked for wisdom to know how to judge the people. Solomon said, Oh Lord, my God, so now you, you made me the king instead of my father, David. But I'm like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am among your chosen people, a nation so great there are almost too many people to count. He said, give me understanding. Give me an understanding mind so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. He said, well, for who by himself, who was able to carry out such a heavy responsibility by himself? Solomon was very wise. He asked God for wisdom. He was only, he got crowned, I believe that, uh, another lesson says about, he was about 20 years old. He didn't know anything. He, 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 you know, he was kind of raw. But um, he asked God to give me wisdom. That's what I want to lead the people. I don't know what I don't know what's wrong right now. To, and all these people, this this whole nation of people, people you're putting me as king. Of, I don't know what to do, Lord. He says, I don't know. I don't know my way around. I don't know how to come in and go out. I don't know when I should come in or when I should go out. He said, so I'm asking you for wisdom and understanding so that I can lead them and govern them right, do the right thing, be fair, be, be a person of mercy if need to be. He said, Lord, you, you just tell me what to do because I'm young. I don't know. But you dealt good with my father's table. So now you got me. I'm on the phone. I need your help. He said, yeah, I need you to help me. And so, but Solomon could have asked for, Lord, give me, just because God told him whatever he asked for, he would get. He could have asked God for riches on top of riches. But Solomon was wise. And he said, no. He said, I want wisdom. I got a job to do. I need wisdom. See, Solomon dared not to lead, his, lead God's people without guidance, which proved how wise he already was. He knew that, uh-uh, before I even start trying to do this, let me ask God for guidance. Let God be my partner. Let him walk along beside me and tell me what to do. Uh-uh, I don't dare even try without asking God for guidance. And you see, we should do the same in our first response. And in a situation, <laughs> it, should, it should come up. We should always be, seek God's guidance. And just be a reliance on God which is the beginning of wisdom, and it allows us to go forward. If I could be like Solomon, just think, he could have had anything. And I think many people would have asked for other things, but Solomon asked for wisdom. And that is very good, because he was aware, he was young, he was green, and he didn't know. But he wanted, he asked God for guidance. Now, I'm not even going to dare to try to lead to God's people without God's guidance. 
And that's the way we should be. As leaders of, of our churches and all, we don't dare to lead God's people without getting God's guidance. So this is something, this part in here is really a very, very important part because we think about, you see, it's worse enough when you ask God. And it's real bad when you don't ask it. So we don't dare try to lead God's people or do anything without asking, without God's guidance. And so it, it says, what's, what's in a person's heart is shown in his life. In Matthew 12, 34 through 40, it states that, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bring forth good, bring forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasures, bring forth evil things. And see, divine wisdom is not like human wisdom. We never want to forget what God commanded to us to do. He said, love and faithfulness. Love and faithfulness require actions. And our actions are the results of what's in our heart. You know, sometimes when you're talking with a person and you say, mm, I'm surprised to hear that coming from that person. Well, out of their heart, that's what you're hearing, out of the heart. And we have to be careful what we have in our heart because eventually it's going to come out. It's going to come out either way. So what we need to do is to if we don't have it in us, it can't come out of us because it's not there. But we have so many times people say, well, I speak my mind. I don't, you know, I don't bite my tongue. Well, it might be a good idea sometimes that you need it because you just say it. It's not, it, it, it's not necessary to say what you say the way you say it. So I'm saying, all I'm saying is saying, well, if I have a question, I take it to the meeting and I ask the question and let the committee or whoever's there decide. But to the way we say things sometimes, I don't like my tongue. I just tell them what I think. Sometimes what you think ain't right. Sometimes what you think is not of God. That is not the way God would have us to do. He, there's a way, there's a time and a way we should do things. Solomon, um, Proverbs is telling us now, you, you know, this is not the thing you've been doing. Get it right. Let's see if it lines up with God. And then you work with it. But now, don't just go and say something right off the bat because something was said and you didn't like it and you were mad. And so you just, just started spilling the right out. That's not what. Proverbs is telling us that ain't the way to live successful. That's not the way. See, sometimes when we're upset and we're mad, we think we're right, and we say that they said this, but sometimes you just got to back off and ask God, God, check me out. See where I go wrong. Check me out. Because sometimes you're surprised a lot of this come out of you. And Solomon, and, and uh, the father is telling us, you know, get yourself right. This, and he's telling us how to do it. He's telling us how to do it, which is very good. And he said, now, you need to seek God's divine wisdom, because it ain't nothing like our human wisdom. So he said, we don't want to forget the commands that God gave us, love and faithfulness require action. He says, our action are the results of what's in our heart. And if the, some people's action is what's in their heart, they got some more work to do. they got a lot of work to do. So... We need to be careful how we do these things. And, and, and in this age, you know, listen, in this age of technology, we can, we have access to information that is never before. One click of the finger, and we can, and, and we can have almost anything we can see. We can have information on almost anything anywhere in the world. Yet, with all the information we can gain from the internet, there is no technology that can give us wisdom like the wisdom that comes from God. Technology has advanced a lot, but we have to remember 
God made technology. God is responsible. He let us go to a certain extent. No matter what you find on the internet, uh, what you see, and it's great because you can sit in one state and get information from three or four other states. And that's good. That part is good. But the thing about it is, as great as that is, as exciting as that may be, nothing is like the wisdom that comes from God. Amen. And no, no matter how much you can get out the internet, it can't help you. Not like that. But when you have that relationship with God, you and him talk. Like last Sunday, the Sunday school was like some of the fathers, forefathers, the prophets of old. Like those in Hebrew 11 and 1, like uh, in, uh, Abraham and all that. You don't find, you don't get that kind of stuff off the internet. Yeah. And so, so when you, so when you have this wisdom from God, it is, it's, it's like, Nothing else that you ever know. You just like to sit and you like to concentrate on that. And, and when you read Proverbs, it tells you all about the things you need to do to keep a good relationship with God. It can be very, very exciting. It can be even more exciting than going on the internet. Because sometimes when you go on the internet, it's no telling what you might see or what might be there. So when you go to God, you and Him got your own line open. And nobody else is in the fear. So we can, so we think about that. That is really exciting to have that relationship with God. See, you know, we all have situations in our lives. Friends, you can have a friend. You may go to your friend or trusted person. And they can abide you. And they might give you some guidance. And, and they comfort you. And all that may be needed. But no one can be to us what God can be to us. And when we're making a point of decision, we must seek God. So we have to, we have to be very careful nowadays, especially because so many people come out and there's so much stuff on the internet and this, that, and the other. And you need to know that you know that this is right. And the only way you're going to know it is to have a relationship with God. When you have a relationship with God, He will lead you, He will guide you, He will move the uh, some obstacles sometimes out of your way. Sometimes He'll let you walk right through the ob- obstacles. And, and you just, you know, it's it just really great to know that God, I have a relationship with God. And you can say, well, you know, whatever comes up, you can just sit down and say, Lord, I'm bringing this before you because I don't know what to do with it. I've tried to work it out. It's just not working out. It just it looks like it's just going to fail, be a failed project. I don't know what to do, Lord, but I know you do. So you know what I started, what I was going to succeed. So I'm asking you, I'm bringing it before you, and let you handle it. And, and you leave it with God, and let God take care of you. He will guide you sometimes when you forgot, kind of forgot all about the situation. God showed you something along the way. This is what you need to do. Or this will help you. And see, the most important relationship we can ever have in this life is our relationship with God. Uh, our relationship with God is for eternity. Everything in life will fade away eventually. Everything we have comes from God, including our time our resources, and our talent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But God says uh, the word of God will always stand because he said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word should stand. Amen. And he said, you know, before my word will fail, heaven and earth will pass away. So what, what, how can you not want a relationship with God? Everything we have comes from God. Our time our resources, and our talent. And then Proverbs, Proverbs provide guidance for everyday, for, for everyday life. Therefore, we should not just read it, but we must apply the principles to our lives and walk closer with the Lord. And you see, sometimes, you know, we have to deal with a lot of bad things. Sometimes a lot of bad people in this life. 
it's, it's going to be hard, and that's why we don't need that relationship with God to help us deal with it. Because no matter what, <clears throat> anywhere you go, there's going to be some, some things that just not going to go your way. And sometimes you meet up with people, or you have to work with people, you deal with people, or you worship with people. Hard, and sometimes they're hard to get along with. But this is why Proverbs is telling us, these are the things you do. You do these things. You get your relationship with God. He gonna, the battle is not yours anyway. He's going to fix it. And mm-hmm. you are sincere with God. And no matter who, who's against you, if God is for you, that's good enough. That's the, you know, that's the best thing you can have. But he's saying, Father, to tell us now, these are the things you get your relationship going. You, you get your relationship with God going. And then you talk to God. So you got to first, if you don't walk with God, you got to first talk with God. So he's uh, probably telling us that now, if you get this straight, you go ahead and, and you get your relationship with God. This is how God calls, what you call success in this world is not what God calls success. God, in the Proverbs, would tell us all the things that we need to do. It, it addresses family, job, uh, church, and everything. He said, uh, and you get with, um, you read Proverbs, and it'll tell you some things to do. Because you're going to need all these things in this world. And it tells you that the first thing to feel God is to begin the wisdom. So once we realize that how powerful our God is, how, well, how merciful he's been, but how powerful he is, then we don't want to be part of his family. At least I do. So you, you you go to God, you get that relationship going, and you tell God all about it, and let God know you want him, and be truthful with him, because he knows the heart. You be truthful with him. Don't, you know, try to play games, because you will not you will not win it. And let him know you really, you know, for a deep relationship with him. If you already have one, you want it deeper. If you don't have it, you want it. So what I'm saying is that Proverbs tells us now this is what he told us to not see. So all of them were wise beyond the years. Okay, then he telling us now he was a young person, and so he had the wisdom to say, I don't dare try to lead God's people without God's guidance. We ought to at least be the same way. Say, uh uh-uh. uh, no, no, no. I don't dare try to lead God's people without God's guidance. And believe me, God's guidance is going to be a lot different than what you already have. There's nothing like God, the God's guidance. Because, and then I can say it, it's going to be with you for eternity. So that is something you can have for the rest of your life. When you, when you have your personal relationship with God. We have, we really face a lot of things, but we face people who don't even know us and don't like us. And we'll, we'll face a lot of stuff. But the good thing about it is, if we have that relationship with God, we won't worry about it. Because sometimes, no matter what you do, some people are going to be hard to get along with anyway. But we don't worry about it. What we have to do, we'll submit. Well, you know, we just submit to God. And obey his command. We rely on him and leave the consequences to God. Because some people's minds are like, are like concrete. It's thoroughly mixed up and permanently said. Are there any comments? Uh, are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to say. I thank God for you every day and thank God for that awesome lesson. And like you said, when you want me to want something, we need to ask God for his guidance and his command, his commandment. Go to him for whatever we need. Cause we go to a friend, they gonna turn us back, they gonna turn it back on you. They make, they make you think they got you, but they'll turn it back on you and leave you a straight. But if we go to our Heavenly Father, He will never lead us astray. He'll always keep us on the right track and the right path. That's right. He's the only one who can do it like you need to be done. That's right. Amen. 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 Am
saying that you were saying about our tongue and stuff, you know, our tongue is an enemy of our own self because as we speak to some people, like these young, some of these people today in the world, you know, they go out and go here and there and they like to have a knife, a gun on them. If you say something wrong to them, they going to they gonna shoot you or cut you anyhow. Because they just don't believe in wisdom or nothing or try to get things right and stuff with the other person that they are talking to. But they don't mind killing you these days and anything. They just hurt you. So you got to fight them. They don't have a relationship with God. That's right. Yes, ma'am. And I, and I can say it's not about us. It's all about God. That's right. Uh, especially one of the things that uh, you said earlier this morning of, like, about what's in the heart. If it's not in you, it can't, it can't come out of you. So we have to be careful of the things that we uh, allow in. Right. We have to, um, first and foremost, we have to uh, put the Word of God within us. Uh, it's one of those things that's like, you know, some medicines you take, it could be, uh, don't take it on an empty stomach right. because uh, those things could lead to ulcers. And, you know, some of the, some of the conversations you find yourself involved in, some of the things you hear, you need to make sure that you pray and align yourself with the Word of God before you uh, receive some of the things that people are saying, because it will it will fester in you and it will cause a spiritual ulcer in you if you're not careful. So I just, just want to say I, I did uh, particularly enjoy that comment uh, and also the tone of how we talk to people. We need to make sure that we uh, we have love within our tone. Uh, we can tell we have to we have to tell uh, tell it like it is. We have to tell the truth, but there's always temper with love. Amen. That's right. We can we can tell the truth, and we can tell how we feel, and we can say, "Well, I don't think that's right," or whatever. But there is a way to do it all. Then you have to be careful the tone of your voice and the expressions on your face. So if you go to God first, he'll tell you some things. Don't even bring that up. I already got it. <laughs> and I just, and I just always say, look back. You know that word "willing." That's that's a that's a powerful word in our in our lifetime. We look at it and and uh, use it as we still use it. Okay. It take us a long way. If we, keep, if we have the relationship with God and we keep listening, we won't go around talking bad about our fellow man. Amen. Amen. We got to have love in our heart to do the wisdom of God or what God tells us to do, want us to do. Yeah, yeah, because it's just like the comment I just made about some people are like concrete. They are thoroughly mixed up and probably sick, and they don't plan on changing. So you have to watch out for things like that. That's why we need God to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because God can tell through all aspects of life. Yes, he can. Yes, that they have faith in him. Right, because I know that he knows where you're for real when you come to him. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does the song, the songwriter say? Lead me, guide me along this along way. Along the way. The Lord, if you lead me, lead me. I shall not stray. That's a true song. So we have Proverbs. Proverbs has told us a lot in these eight verses, and we will begin the new year. Some of this old stuff, let's don't bring that baggage over from last year. Amen. Let's, that's right. Let that baggage stay in, in, in 23. We got a new year. God has blessed us. <clears throat> this year here can still enjoy some things 
He didn't leave us here just because we were so good. Or he didn't leave us here because we were the worst. We don't know why he left us here, but we know we're here. So we can, we run over, you know, instead of, you know, we don't make a res- New Year's resolution. No, I just keep working on the old ones that I've been working on for years. Yeah. Trust me, Ruth, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a top you one on that. Say, uh, <laughs> don't bring, leave it in the old year. I'm a, I'm a say, don't bring it in today. Leave it in yesterday. You know, one thing I will, okay. will say, uh, okay. Brother Dad makes a, makes a comment about addressing it. Go ahead and address it and don't leave it behind. Okay. See, our problem is we want to, many, many times we don't address it. And then sometimes when we do address it, we just we just keep hammering it down to to it comes out our way. But you know sometimes some people just not going to change. And that's what I said. That's what I said. That's right. But we know God is in charge of all of it. You can either change now or you can change when it's too late. That's right. So this year, we're going to support each other, we're going to look out for each other, and we're going to get along with each other. And, and then, then since next, we got to remember, God going to always be with us, with us when nobody else is. I know, he's going to care about us when nobody else is care. And that's right. No so man will tell us too. anything. He'll tell us one thing and then do another. But God gonna stay the same. <laughs> yes. Good morning. Um, enjoyed the message as always. And again, when you say wisdom, yes, wisdom is the word. Um. I understood um uh when uh uh Deacon uh Rick said uh talking about you know you gotta be careful how you talk to folk and and uh, the children they, they may have a knife and all that kind of stuff. But for me for me, hey, if I don't wake up in the morning it's all right. I uh I ain't got a whole lot of religion, but I got some. I got faith, I got trust. So I trust and believe. So whatever come my way, I'm ready. Um, um, if if I say I'm my brother's keeper and I'm gonna stand, uh, 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 uh stand up, uh, might not be all the way to work, or like I say, ain't there yet, but I think I got enough in me. But I'm gonna stand no matter what come up against me. If if if, if I can't, if I'm not gonna preach the truth, and 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 um. Uh, I might not even wake up in the morning. But if I preach the truth to somebody need to hear it and they feel like they need to take my life, well, hey, it's all way up my soul. I'm I'm ready. You know, I, and that's the problem with with the day. You know, we, 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 we see a whole lot of things going on uh, in the churches. And I mean, just a mess. Like I have said a long time ago, we need to have a coming to Jesus meeting. We, we got to, we, we, we are just some messed up folk. We, we gotta stop supporting mess. We gotta be true to ourselves. You ain't fooling nobody. You know, it, it, it's crazy. And we all know each other, basically. So we know what's in our, basically what's in our heart. You know me. I might, I might say some choice words sometime or, or, or say something ignorant, but you know where my heart is. And, and like I say, we, we are supposed to be our brothers and sisters keeper. If we ain't gonna do that, then what? What is our purpose? I mean, we, 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 we you know, I, 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 I enjoy the message, uh, uh, because, like you say, uh, wisdom, wisdom carry you a long ways. Wisdom show you how to deal with folk, and sometimes folk might not accept it. But I come to the conclusion that hey, it's just like you, what you preach to us, what the pastor preach to us. I might, y'all don't have no control on how we receive it, but you gotta say it. It's true. So I don't worry about how people receive it to a certain degree. I ain't gonna try to be nasty, but if I'm putting the truth out there, I have no control on how they receive it. Same way, like I said, when, uh, when the pastor put it out there. But the main thing, we gotta start being true to ourselves. We say we're gonna do one thing, let's do it because we cannot say. 
well, we need to do this, we need to do that. Then we come right back as the leader or whomever and do it from one day to the other. And so we we, we just got to be true to ourselves, stand behind what we say. Stay behind what we say. If you say something, don't come back tomorrow and change it. And we're talking about leaving stuff in the past and all that kind of stuff. Let's work on it. But understand when I say that I'm going to leave it in the past, then I need to leave it in the past and you need to leave it in the past. So y'all have a good morning. Sunday school coming from Anderson Chapel Church uh, in Michaelsfield. Uh, the pastor is in Goldsboro today at St. Stephen's at his uh, other church. Uh, Anderson is first and third in-house. 
uh, St. Stephen's and Goldsboro is second and fourth in the house. Um, I'm going to shut down now. Um, I will post a link. He uh, does it on YouTube in the church. So I will post the, um, I'll share the link to the YouTube uh, as soon as it pop up. I don't think it pop up right uh, now. It'll be maybe a few minutes. I think he might have it on a timer or something. But as soon as it pop up, I will I'll share the link to the Southern Mother Service in Goldsboro. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, I'll be doing it from home, um, the Sunday school. So that's why it's no uh, picture. It's only audio. I'm recording from my phone, uh, free conference call. Y'all have a good morning.